morning. Uh, praise the Lord. How are you doing this morning? I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Bwana Yesu Asifiwe. I want to take this opportunity to invite uh, all of us in our daily devotion, in our daily uh, and in this week that uh, God may bless us and God may continue to equip us more and more. And even as yesterday we continue to share on uh, how God uh, expects us to worship Him through giving and uh, our, core, our core agenda or our core business in this world uh, having it that uh, God calls us even to worship Him and God is giving uh, even the instruction on how He supposes us uh, to worship Him. So I want to receive you in this week and I want to receive you by God's grace even as we continue to learn about uh, giving, even as we continue to learn about how God wants us to worship Him through giving. This week also will try to see more about what God has purpose for us uh, even to hear. As our uh, tradition this morning and uh, under this very new week, a very uh, blessed time, a very blessed day, let us start with a word of prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you, we want to honor you and to exalt your holy name. You are our Father, you are our Lord and our God. We appreciate everything that you've done for us. We appreciate every step that you've allowed us to take. And this morning, Heavenly Father, we continue to thank you because of this great privilege that you've given us even to hear from you. We know that, God, your word uh, is a message from your breath, and we believe that, God, you have uh, uh, what you have prepared for us in this day and in this week that we may share together. Bless us indeed, even as we share from you, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I receive you once again that we may continue and listen uh, from God. Today, allow me to just uh, do a little bit of a recap as I'll bring to attention what uh, God desires that we may learn uh, today, is that uh, this month we've been tackling the subject of giving. And this month we've been through even the guidance of uh, the leadership of the church that we should ensure that the fire of Christian giving is continuously burning and we must not allow it uh, to go out. And therefore, friends, even as we seek God in this week and even as we seek God, that he may cause us to allow the fire of Christian giving to continuously burning is good we have it in our hearts. I normally like to mention it, that the place that we have with our God is in our hearts, that our God is a giver. And because God is a giver, we too should give. He gave his son for us, and we have no option but also to give our lives first and then to give our resources to the Lord. Number two, we own nothing. We are just stewards. That all things that we have belongs to God. We are just stewards and God expects us to be very faithful in our giving. He expects us even to be good stewards of everything that he has blessed us. And therefore, when we come to give, we give as people who are giving uh, to the owner. And the third thing that we need to know that when God uh, calls us to give, he even calls us to make it our lifestyle, that when we give, we uh, make it part of our lives. That we give, we are not giving because we've been told to give, but we give because the nature of God is to give, and because uh, also we are supposed to give ourselves, but again let us make it to be our lifestyle. Today I want to bring to us about uh, uh, giving willingly, giving willingly. You know, first thing first, uh, giving, we can say giving, uh, is the transfer of ownership or uh, of uh, something from one person to another, a transfer of ownership. And uh, giving uh, can be uh, voluntary or can be coercing, meaning that you can have a voluntary giving and to some extent you can be coerced to give. You know, but like the issue of the church, we believe that giving in the church is voluntary. 
how God speaks to your heart, how God leads you, how God has revealed you the benefits of giving as we've been sharing in the previous weeks, how God has revealed to us on why we are supposed to give. And then you come out voluntarily. You know we have the manner of giving, those dimensions that I mentioned uh, the other week, and you felt that you come, you give uh, voluntarily. But we have other, uh, uh, other forms of giving which is a coercing way of giving or a mandatory uh, 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 giving where you are supposed to give whether you like it or not. Like for instance, uh, you can be uh, supposed or you can, uh, sometimes you are supposed to pay the school fees. That one is not, uh, uh, is not voluntarily you have to pay. What about the tax? Uh, the tax? And uh, even when the tax is mentioned, to some extent, there is something that comes into our mind that it is mandatory. You have to pay. You are, you are coerced to give. But may God cause us, even as we think of those other areas or all those other levels, like the issue is supposed even to give the, uh, the rent or the person that you are living in his other house, it's good also to know that God is calling us to continue to worship him uh, to give, to have uh, that uh, uh, free, uh, uh, free space that we can give uh, willingly. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse seven and nine, uh, seven to uh, and eight. It says like this: Second Corinthians chapter nine, uh, verse seven and eight. It says that each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under, under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. In verse 8 it says, And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. First thing first that I want to bring across from uh, that text is that God is calling every man to give. God is calling me to give. God is calling you to give. God is calling us that uh, because he's a giver, we too should give. And that's why he said that each man, when you give, you should decide in your heart to give. So when we fellowship and when we give, uh, uh, when we give as a way of uh, worshiping God, number one, we have to decide. We have to decide in our heart. First, make a decision from your heart that you want to give. And number two, when you have decided, don't relax, don't relax, don't, not reluctantly or under compulsion. In other words, they say that if you feel that you want to give, uh, give willingly, not reluctantly or with or under compulsion. So it's up to us, it's up to you to give, to give, to give willingly, not under compulsion. Because why? God loves a cheerful giver. I'm looking forward for this time when we come to give our offering, when we come to give to the Lord and we rejoice. That's why in most cases we, we, we normally sing song of praises when we give. When we sing song of praises, it is a, is a, it's symbolic that indeed we are rejoicing. For what the Lord has done for us, we are rejoicing for his goodness. We are rejoicing for his love. We are rejoicing for he has, he has hold us with his right, righteous hand. So when we come, we give willingly. We give based on how God has blessed us. We give, we give cheerfully. We give with joy as we celebrate. And when we give, our faces are shining. You know, I don't know if you have ever found uh, people giving and their face uh, uh, is not is not expressing the celebratory mood. God is reminding us today even when we give because we are giving willingly. No one has coerced you. No one has made you as a tell you that you must give. But it is the Lord himself when you see what he has done for you even when you come with an offering of thanksgiving, you give it with a cheerful heart. In verse 9, another thing that I want to point to you is the issue of grace. It is the issue of grace. Do you know we were, uh, we were saved by the grace? The, it's only by the grace of God that you are saved. It means something that we acquired by the grace 
it is something that even we did not deserve. It is something that even if we can try to figure it out in a very, in a very close, close mirror, we can see that even uh, it was not supposed to be ours. But the scripture is speaking about the grace, and God is able to make all grace abound in you. This is when we have given willingly. This is when we have given with a cheerful heart. This is when we have, uh, have given not reluctantly or under compulsion. Say that the grace of God will abound in you. And if the grace or when the grace of God abounds in us is that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Allow me to make a prayer for you today in uh, using this uh, text here, that number one, the grace of God may be sufficient to you. Number two, allow me to make a prayer to you this morning that in all things and in all times, in all things and in all time, uh, uh, having all that you need, my prayer to you is that may you uh, never lack anything that you need. May God provide for you. All the time may God provide for you. All the days, in all things, may God provide for you. And uh, last, or uh, the what, is, what crowns it all is that, and you will abound in every good work. When all is said and done, when you give willingly to the Lord, when you give to the Father, uh, God is going to make his grace to abound, uh, abound in you, and you will have everything that you need. And as you have everything that you need, you will excel in the good work that God has placed in store for you. So may God bless you. May God keep you. May God uh, walk before you to scatter every man out of darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you.